Cool. Today, I have the greatest pleasure in announcing that our beloved Reverend Bettina, who has been doing this for long and finally now has the recognition, is our new director of the prayer ministry. She comes from a heart, you've heard her essence, you've heard her heart, you've heard her meditations, you've heard her prayers, and you know that she's right there. So, thank you so much, sweetie. We have such a great spiritual family here, with everybody helping and digging in and coming together, and it's just, we just keep evolving and, and blossoming, and it's exciting. So, the topic this month is open at the top and awaken to the possible. Years ago, when I first started in religious science, the big thing was that Dr. Holmes talked about being open at the top, that it wasn't this structure of rules and regulations that boxed you in. It was like the song. It was a process, both for the philosophy that he was developing and for each of us. I remember about a year ago, Jeff did a, a sermon on the box. Remember you had the box and you stepped in and out of the box? I love pictures because they stay with me. And I still ask myself sometimes when I'm really sick and tired of being sick and tired about something, why am I continuing to do it? Am I stuck in this box? And is it comfort? Is it fear? Why am I not stepping out of the box? It's like I get this visual of, of like a, a jail cell in the middle and I'm in the jail cell, and there's a key in the lock, but I won't reach and unlock the, the door and let myself out. It's like I can see out of the box. I can see out of the jail cell. There's a top, there's a sun, there's stars and a moon, and it's up there. And so many times I felt I couldn't reach it. It was like, you know, Pilgrim's Progress and the slows of, of despair. It's like this muck and the, you know, I'm stuck in the muck and the junk and it's anchoring me down. It's my anger or my pain or my betrayals or all those emotions that we go through as we learn. The core pains that we go through that really hurt, that feel physical, that can make you unhappy and make you sad and make you depressed and all of those things and being afraid to step out because I didn't know what was there. The other was comfortable. I knew what was in my box. I knew where my clothes were, I knew where the car was, where the food was. All of those little mm. things had their place. But what I learned was that if I didn't get out of the box, my spirit couldn't fly. So years ago, they gave me this class where you were supposed to figure out what you wanted in life. And they were looking for objective things, you know, like what do you want in your career or the house or the car? And I didn't want any of those things. And actually my mom was teaching the class and she got so frustrated with me. But I wanted freedom. I wanted freedom for my childhood. I wanted freedom from expectations. I wanted to wear white before Easter. I wanted to wear white after Labor Day. I wanted to color outside the lines. You know, I remember the time I'm jumping on the bed feeling really free, and just as I break it, my dad goes by the window outside, you know, and directly into the house and into the bedroom. But I wanted that kind of freedom. They were always saying, keep the heart of the child, and I was having trouble keeping hold of my child. And the fun and the excitement and the anticipation. And because of the so much muck in my little bitty box that I had, I lost that. I lost touch. So I had to learn to awaken to the possible, that there was something possible, that I could get out of that box and maybe it wouldn't be any better, but could it really be much worse because it really sucked. And I finally realized that if I don't step out, I'm never going to know. If I don't reach for the stars and figure out a dream of whatever it is, that I'm going to be here for, I remember when I turned 50 and I'm thinking, oh God, another 50 years, can I do this? Do I want to do this? I understand how people let themselves get sick or don't want to heal or don't want to change because we're so tired. It's a hard world. It's rough. It's weary. And when you're in the muck, that's all you see. But when you start taking the time 
to stop and look. You see beauty. You see healing. You see love. You see hearts. You see smiles. We have a gift up here of beautiful mountains and lakes and lovely walks and vistas. We have a community and a spiritual family here that is full of love, that will look you in the eye and share love and say things that you think they mean. That it's not just being plastic or fake or social commentary. When Betty stands up here and talks about feeling the love, I believe her. I don't think, oh God, she's doing that because it sounds good and maybe look good on TV or something. You know, everybody will like it. I believe it. When they sing the songs, I believe it. When we do the prayer protection, I believe it. When we do the healing circle, I believe it. Because people have risked and opened their hearts and started to see our lives and our world in a different way. And you start then to reconnect with the child and the joy and the fun. You can giggle and make jokes and they're not going to go away and think, oh, how stupid that was. They're going to enjoy it with you. They're going to do things together, come together, help together. I can remember years ago reading a book about the Indigo Kids, and they would watch the kids in a classroom. And without talking, the kids would interact and help each other. One would be helping this one. That child would get up and go over and do something with that one, and another one would come in. It was like a dance. They knew what was necessary, and they did it. They didn't have to be asked. They didn't have to be told. And that's what we have here. Look at this building. People stepped up. They made beautiful paintings, and we've got the beautiful stars, and we had Christmas, and we've got the TV that was donated that will help with our learning center. People have come together in love and caring, giving with no strings attached, not thinking, what do I get back? But what can I give? That's what open at the top is. That's what possible is. The possibility to have a society where we can be healed, where we don't have to be miserable, where we can laugh and have fun and enjoy and love getting together. This is the dream. This is what the American dream is. Freedom. The freedom to be yourself, to love, to feel, to care. I give thanks I was born in this country. You don't see me as mouthy as I used to be, but I grew up in a family where women were, were aggressive and prominent and mouthy. I couldn't have lived in a lot of places in the world. I would have been killed or in jail. I was blessed to be here. And I give thanks for that, that we're here together. You don't have to think if I get this house or if I move or if I go away, it's going to be better. It can be better right here. But you know what you have to do? You have to reach out and let people know. You need help, you ask. You're not feeling well? Get in the healing circle. See the practitioner. Make a phone call. Send an email. Ask. We can't help if we don't know that it's needed. You don't have to be brave. You don't have to have this shell. We've all done something we're ashamed of. We've all got something that we don't want to talk about. We've all done something like that sometime in our lives. It would be impossible not to. We're not perfect like the song said. The perfect means that we're the perfect us doing what we're doing right now, right where we are. It's not some thing out here that we have to attain. Let's see, I got that, and I checked that one off, and I did that. I just need to learn these three things that I got. It's not like that. We're perfect in our evolutionary status, in our progress, wherever that is. When we were kids, you had somebody that jumped to class. You had some that stayed back. Life is like that. If the subject, subject's hard, I need a tutor. I needed a tutor for statistics. They had to tell it to me over and over until I finally got it. But I didn't get it the first day in class. We have to learn things, and it's OK however we do it. That's our perfection. I don't know if you've ever been in a retreat or a class where everybody sang their soul song, whatever that is. Out of tune, in tune, all different notes, all different ways, different vibrations, different sounds, different <clears throat> echoes. 
but when you record it and you listen to it, it comes together and it is the most beautiful thing you've ever heard. This is a beautiful group because each and every one of us is here. We make it complete to get the hugs that are meant, to get smiles, to be looked in the eye, to be okay however you show up. Come in flip flops and shorts, that's okay. Want to wear a suit, that's okay. We're good with it all. That's where we get unity through diversity. And that is what open at the top is. We're not, we're not tied into one culture, one religion, one belief system. Everything has truth, everything has value. Everybody is experienced. Does it matter what side of the war it is when you honor veterans, or do we honor all of them? Because they all thought they were fighting for their country or their belief or their God or whatever it is. We don't need to have the hate. We don't need to have racism. Inside, we're all the same. We all pump blood. We all have all these different things. When my first husband was in the service and when we traveled to different bases, I've got to tell you, just plain white America is like white bread, it's boring. If you can't get Mexican food or Japanese food or go to all the festivals and stuff, there's no color almost when you're used to it and you have it like we have here. I grew up in the valley. We had everything. You ate everybody's food. It was wonderful to be able to share and to love, to have their festivals. We had Japanese kids went to Japanese school on Saturday because they were learning the lessons and the customs. If you're Catholic, you went to catechism. Everybody did something different. But everybody ended up at swimming lessons. We all had things that we did together. Find that. Find that in your heart to be loving and not judgmental. And most important, to be loving to yourself. That's the biggest lesson here. To accept ourselves, to love ourselves. And that's a hard one. I still some days don't feel that great and can't look at myself in the mirror and go, I love you, you're beautiful. It's like, oh God, look at that, that's terrible. Don't go anywhere today. And I wish I had a hat. <laughs> we have those days. I'm not saying it's all up here. But what happens is instead of this, life starts going more like this. There's a gentle flow to it. You're still going to have some things that bother you. You're still going to have some things because we're works in progress. That's what life is. It's the journey. It's the journey that can go anywhere you want. You just have to decide how much effort you want to put into it. We can all be anything we want. We come in with all the connections to speak any language to do anything. What do we use? We use certain ones and the others atrophy, but they're there. We can do anything. If you want to practice like, like a concert pianist does and devote your life to it, I bet you could play the piano pretty well. If you wanted to be in pain and have the bloody feet and everything that a ballerina has and go through the life she has, you could probably dance pretty well. But it's deciding what you want to give for what you want. But it takes the first step. You gotta take that step out of the box and you gotta risk. So when something pisses you off this week, just bless it. You see somebody that, that cuts you off in the road? I remember reading a book on a verbal Aikido a long time ago, and he talked about treat life like you're welcoming a friend into your home. So if somebody pushes in front of line, you would let your guests go first, and then you would walk after them. If somebody cuts you off, you would let your guests go first. Treat life like that. It becomes gentler and easier, and the headaches go away, and the stomachs get better, and your digestion is better, and the stress is down. It's just little changes. Just a little tweak here, a little tweak there. But it's worth it. So this next month, as you think about it, and you still remember a little bit about what I said, think about where you are in your box, and can you step out? Because that's the road to freedom. Thank you.